So, do you want to know why Apple will never use NVIDIA graphics card? Well, stay tuned. Alright champs, let's get rid of Windows Home and let's get some Windows Pro. Copy and paste my code from the description. New codes, new discount. You can get Windows Professional Office. Paste my code. Boom! It's Windows Pro time. Next generation graphics. We've got the GeForce 9400 built into the new MacBook Pro. But even that wasn't the best we could do. We've added to that a new chip out of NVIDIA, the GeForce 9600 MGT. The 9600 MGT is the state of the art in mobile graphics. This is a real screamer. It's got 32 parallel graphics cores, 120 gigaflops, and up to 512 megabytes of video memory. So we've decided to include both of them in the new MacBook Pro. And our architecture looks like this with the 9400 as the chipset and graphics if you choose, or if you choose, you can switch over to the 9600 MGT for graphics to get the ultimate performance you can get out of a notebook. And if you're using the 9400M, you get five hours of battery life, if you want to go into turbo mode and use the fastest graphics, you get four hours of battery life. You get to pick. Tully ho there champs. Now let's have a look at why Apple will never use Nvidia graphics card for the foreseeable future at least until, you know, things get sorted out, if they ever do. Now there are a lot of theories around. I'm going to tell you the exact reason why they will not use Nvidia graphics. Now did you just see AMD released a new Radeon 7? Well stay tuned because I will be connecting that to a Mac doing a lot of content creation gaming and I'll do it on Ultrabooks as well PCs. I will compare a lot of things with that Radeon 7 external graphics and internal so stay tuned for that. And I'm going to talk about why a lot of Mac users may actually switch to the PC to the dark side because of Nvidia's RTX graphics. And it's not got to do with how powerful they are, there's something special in them that I'll cover later. As you may or may not know, there has been a lot of people switching from the Mac to PC in the last, say, few years. And there's a few reasons for that. Now there were a few people that left the Mac ecosystem when, you know, Apple released Final Cut X, they didn't like it. Everybody loved Final Cut Pro 7. OG man, OG, I love that. Final Cut Pro 7 was the shit. I actually used to use that, now I use Premiere Pro. Because that's like Final Cut 7, how that used to be. And man, that was so good, Final Cut Pro 7. But anyway, there was a few people that switched then. Then what happened was the iPad happened, right? And Apple bet on the iPad being the next big thing. Apple sort of regarded as the Mac as a legacy product. And who can blame them, right? In Steve Jobs' last letter, go have a look. I'll see if I can find it. But you'll see, I think it's number 11 on the list. Oh, iPad outsold the Macs within... I think it was like a year, outsold all the Macs, iPad. So they bet on that. Now, in hindsight, we know that the iPad's not going to be a content creation device. It's not going to replace a Mac. But a lot of Mac users thought Apple had abandoned them. They didn't upgrade the Mac Pro for ages. You know, the iMac Pro was just basically a stopgap. They quickly rushed that out because they realized they really have to put more effort into the Mac. And actually, in the last couple of years, the Mac has come back. I'm really happy about that. They are making relevant products again. So a lot of people did sort of switch to Windows because they could get more powerful hardware. It was actually cheaper. The prices of Macs have gone out of control, if you haven't already noticed. So that's another reason why people were jumping over to Windows. But mainly, it was because, you know, they abandoned sort of the Mac. They weren't upgrading the Mac Pro, you know, the iMac Pro is not what people wanted. They want something more modular like the Mac Pro, like the old cheese grater Mac Pro where you can stick cards in and stuff like that. They don't want to be, you know, putting Thunderbolt things in like an iMac. And now the MacBook Pros, yeah, they're good now. They've got Vega 20, they've got six cores. They're really great for content creation. They've done a lot of good work. So you had so many people switching for those reasons I just mentioned. Now sort of Apple has put more work into the Mac. Maybe some people have switched back. Maybe some people that were on the fence thinking about it have stayed in the Apple ecosystem. But that might have just changed with RTX graphics. But before I get into why it might have changed with RTX graphics, I first want to talk about why Apple won't use NVIDIA graphics. Now there's a lot of theories around there. I'm going to give you the two proper reasons for people that know these are the reasons. First of all, 
It goes back to 2008. Apple released a MacBook Pro with NVIDIA graphics that failed. Now, this was industry-wide. Every laptop that had these NVIDIA graphics had problems. But NVIDIA and BitDog, they wiped their hands of it. They said, hey, this is your problem. You should have done this and that. And Apple thought, well, they haven't taken responsibility for this. It cost Apple a lot of money to uh, fix these laptops with these NVIDIA graphics that were failing. I think it was something to do with the solder on the motherboard, the heat or whatever. It doesn't matter why. What matters is these NVIDIA cards were failing in these MacBook Pros and Apple were on their own. They actually had to cover the cost of these repairs themselves. Now, this is in the Steve Jobs era. Now, you do not want to piss off Steve Jobs. He's got a long memory and yeah, you do not piss him off. So you can imagine Steve, he would have thought, well, hey, screw you guys. We're never going to use you again. Now, they actually did continue to use NVIDIA cards up to around 2013 or something like that. I think IMAX actually had NVIDIA cards up until then, but I think these were already in the process of being, you know, designed and made. So I think they continued with those. And what's important to know is you're talking about 2008. Apple are not the juggernaut they are now. They couldn't bully. Like now, if that happened with NVIDIA, they'll just bully them, take them to court, and say, we're the king, we're the big dog, you do what we say. They couldn't do that back then. You know, the iPhone had just started, the iPad wasn't out yet, they weren't the big juggernaut they are now, and Mac was probably still their number one product. And this would have cost them a huge amount of money, and they didn't have lots of money then. And it wasn't until 2010 you can really say Apple, once they released the iPad and the iPhone had really kicked on, that they were really the juggernaut or resembling the Apple we know of today. So let's fast forward to now why don't they use nvidia graphics now and again it's two stubborn companies you have nvidia the big dog of the graphics if you want the best graphics you have to buy nvidia you have apple the big dog of the tech industry now i'm sure apple do want to use nvidia graphics but the problem here is nvidia will not allow them to control the firmware and the drivers so if you don't know about macs they're built on metal so it's basically like direct x for windows everything is used on metal the graphics is all accelerated with metal so it's really built into the core of the Mac system. Now, AMD let Apple do whatever they want. They let them control the chip, the firmware, the driver, so they can really write to the metal and get the best performance, get the best reliability out of these AMD chips because they control everything. All AMD do is supply the hardware, Apple control everything else. Now, the reason why NVIDIA won't do it is because they don't let the third parties control it. Now, what you'll notice if you have an NVIDIA card is you cannot update the firmware and you can only use NVIDIA drivers. Now, of course, you can flash like third-party stuff on it and use maybe third-party drivers. People have done this for mining and for other reasons, but one thing's for sure, the manufacturers like Dell or HP, Lenovo, whatever, they cannot write the drivers themselves. They cannot update the firmware themselves. It's all controlled by NVIDIA, and NVIDIA want control because maybe it's proprietary and they want just control of their whole system. I sort of understand that, and they could probably use NVIDIA graphics and let NVIDIA control the drivers. Really, I wish they would. But either Apple are being stubborn and saying, no, if you don't give us control, we're not going to use your products or there is a technical reason for it. That Mac OS relies so much on metal and it's actually such a core part of the system that it probably might be less reliable if they had NVIDIA cards and NVIDIA were controlling the drivers. Who knows which one's true? But for whatever reason, we're getting shortchanged because, you know, if we want the best graphics, we can't get them in the Mac. Although they're doing a good job with the AMD cards, I would say they're really getting really good performance out of them. So even though they might not be the most powerful graphics cards, I think Apple are getting the most out of them. Now with Apple, they have a big core of users that use the Macs for video editing. In fact, if you look at Mac products, they choose the DCI P3 color gamut rather than Adobe RGB because that is better suited to video, whereas Adobe RGB is better suited for desktop publishing and photography. Now they both have such wide color gamuts that it really doesn't matter. You could use either for all. Now what's so special about RTX graphics cards that may make people on the fence about switching between a Mac and a PC actually switch over to the PC. And that's because a lot of video editors use red cameras. Now, before RTX graphics cards come out, there was actually no computer in the world that could actually play back red raw footage at full resolution. Didn't matter if you had the most powerful Mac, didn't matter if you had the most powerful PC with 64 cores and like five graphics cards, it didn't matter. You could never do it. So what 
most people would do is convert that red raw footage to, you know, ProRes, DXNR, Cineform. And even if you use Final Cut, if you haven't turned off background rendering, that's what happens anyway. You just put the red footage in there and it'll actually start converting it to ProRes in the background. But now RTX graphics cards can actually decode red raw footage on the fly in your video editor. Woof. For the first time ever, I could actually buy a really inexpensive computer and put an RTX graphics card in it. So I could just buy a consumer 6 core PC, 16, 32 gigs RAM, really low cost, put an RTX graphics card in it and it will be able to decode red raw footage in the timeline on the fly in real time. And it would just like blow away like a $20,000 computer or the most expensive Mac when it comes to actually playing that raw footage in the timeline. So this is a massive deal. So that means you do not have to convert it. You do not have to have background rendering on. You save on hard drive space. You save on time. It's just game changing to be able to just drop the red raw footage straight into the computer onto the timeline. Boom. Edit it. No converting. No hard drive space wasted. No resources wasted, background rendering. And how much time will you save not having to convert all that footage? Eliminates the need to do proxies and stuff like this. It's game changing. It's going to save a lot of time if you use red footage. So now if you're actually someone, a professional or you're in the industry and you're using red cameras and raw, how much time can you save just being able to dump that straight in, edit straight away? It's going to be massive. And I could see a lot of people on the Mac side that actually use red footage just thinking to themselves, time is money. We're going to save a lot of time here if we move over to the PC. So hopefully we'll get a solution for this for the Mac. Hopefully we can make NVIDIA RTX graphics work properly on the Macs. So anyway, I'd like to thank you for watching. Let me know what you think. Come on, let's get some NVIDIA into Max. And if you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up. Let me know your thoughts about this. And until next time, guys, Sally Ho.